Welcome back. It's Miss Tony, and I'm in week 27 of my 40 year old pregnancy journey. Thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week the baby is the size of a head of cabbage. That's about 14 and a half inches and about two pounds. The baby's getting bigger and I'm excited next week because I have my ultrasound and so I'll be able to actually see the measurements of the baby. So one new pregnancy symptom this week was a slight rash um, on my ankle of my right foot and on the ankle and like up my calf on my left leg. Um, I'm very chocolate so it's actually really hard to capture it. I would try to take pictures and even try to show it on a video before this and I just couldn't get any good shots because it's more of something you can feel than you can see. Um, and again it just feels like like little bumps and they came out of nowhere. I usually don't have any skin conditions and so I remember putting on some baby oil uh, maybe a week ago and I noticed there were these little bumps on my ankles and so then I just kind of checked it out a little bit more. I had Kelvin check out the areas on my other parts of my body just to make sure it wasn't something widespread and it wasn't. It was just on those two areas. So I had my appointment with a dermatologist this week and it, they are like the happiest doctors on earth. Um, their caseload is so light. They get paid all this money. He saw me probably for two minutes. I mean, I waited in the waiting room and waited in the patient room longer than the time spent with him. So shout out to dermatologists because they, they picked the right specialty in medicine. But he quickly ruled out P-U-P-P-P. -P -P. So it's called PUP. And it is a common rash found in late term pregnancy. And I had Googled it before I came. So I, and what I like to do when I go to the doctor, I like to Google something first and then come up with like a little checklist, come up with an idea of what I think the issue may be, whether it's me or the girls or Kelvin. Um, and then I wait to see if they're going to bring up something related to that. And he did. So I was like, okay, you, you know what you're doing all these years. He's an older guy. All these years you've been a dermatologist, you, you know, from, even though it was a quick, quick appointment and he just observed me really quickly, um, he was able to rule out pup. So I was surprised because I actually thought that's what it was. Um, but pup is typically a rash that starts on your belly and then spreads to other parts of your body. And I don't have any bumps at all on any other parts of my body other than my two ankles and my one calf. So he said, nope, it's not pup, which is just so you guys know, it's a common rash in late pregnancy. Um, it's because your skin stretches so much, like everywhere. <laughs> and I mentioned that it starts on the stomach usually. Obviously, that's the biggest area, largest area of skin that is spreading as you're growing and getting bigger and bigger. And so oftentimes, you just lose moisture in your skin. Even if you're moisturizing daily, um, you just have so much skin stretching that you don't have the ability to get that elasticity that you usually have. And the moisture, you, you usually got to go into overload instead of using the normal amounts of lotion or baby oil or whatever it is that you use um, in order to sort of prevent it. And that's something that they talk about with stretch marks too, which I don't know, I have stretch marks and as an African-American woman, um, I think it's genetic just based on information that I've read and researched um, and just my family genes. But I honestly didn't have stretch marks until the last four weeks of my first pregnancy. So I did stay moisturized. Uh, I love cocoa butter, <laughs> like love cocoa butter. <laughs> Shout out to cocoa butter. <laughs> uh, Palmer's, I need to have a sponsorship or some type of pay partnership because I absolutely love you. Um, I use it on my kids for everything. Kelvin thinks it's hilarious, um, but I really do. I, I think it's like the best cure-all, uh, quick, quick cure-all for any like bumps, cuts, bruises. And I put it on my belly every day. So actually, before I even went to the doctor, I started putting the cocoa butter on my two ankles where the little bumps were. And I swear to y'all, after like 24 hours, they were beginning to vanish. I could still feel them, but like I couldn't even see the darkness of them anymore. And again, because I'm so dark, they weren't like red. They were just darker, a little slightly darker than my skin, but almost blended right in with my skin color. And so um, I use the cocoa butter and the next day a lot of the bumps had already disappeared and I couldn't get an appointment for like 
five days but by the time I got there I did still have some remnants of the bump still there and so like I said the doctor in and out the room and he said oh it's just eczema <laughs> which I was like really <laughs> I've never had eczema in my life but again when you're pregnant you get all types of new symptoms and conditions that you never dealt with before so he prescribed me a uh, topical steroid so I of course had to tell him that I was pregnant I had to tell the nurse as well and um they were gonna write me a different prescription but because of my pregnancy they had to have something that was pregnancy category b which is the safest category for pregnant women and so this is what he prescribed for me triamcinolone acetonide cream 0.1 percent and this is actually like eight times more potent than prednisone. So I was like, are you sure? I actually am a big believer in utilizing all your people resources. And so I always talk to the pharmacist when I have questions about a prescription, whether it's for me, my kids, my husband, my mom, my mom like anybody. Um, and so the pharmacist looked it up in the system and um, said, yes, even though it's more potent than prednisone. It actually has been found to be safe in pregnant women, especially because it's topical. So it's not something that I'm ingesting. And so uh, the pharmacist agreed that this was the safest option for me. And so I went ahead and filled the prescription and I've been using this for a couple days and so far so good. You're supposed to apply it topically twice a day. Uh, I'll be honest, I usually do it once a day because I just don't remember. Doesn't smell horrible, but that's part of the reason why I don't do it twice a day because I don't want that lingering on me all day. So I just do it at night um, and, you know, put on my socks and my sweats and cover up the little slight smell that it does have. Um, but yeah, it seems to be safe and I have been using it for a few days and I have noticed that the little rash is disappearing. So doctor could be right. It was probably just eczema and not pup. Uh, one other thing the doctor recommended in addition to the topical steroid is an oatmeal bath. And I actually have some Aveeno oatmeal mix that I have used with the girls before. Um, and so I'm going to try that. And other than that, they say like calamine lotion, um, anything that's soothing for your skin to just go ahead and um, in addition to the steroid to try those at home as well. So those are nice home rem remedies if you don't have an opportunity to get to your dermatologist or you uh, maybe don't have coverage for a prescription. Uh, those are some other nice natural remedies to reduce the rash that um, either comes with pup or is just some type of eczema um, which might have come on due to your pregnancy. So this little segment is called Did You Know? I've been sprinkling in uh, little tidbits here and there just based on my previous experiences with my last two pregnancies. Um, some stuff that y'all may not always want to hear. So uh, again, if it's your first time being a mom or you're not a mom yet, so you don't experience all these things, you may want to fast forward or <laughs> close your ears, but I'll be brief. So this one is not as bad as the last one um, where I was talking about my episiotomy um, and my tear from my deliveries. This one is actually um, about your abdomen. So one thing that I experienced with my first pregnancy, which believe it or not, every woman experiences, you just, people don't talk about it, so you don't know. But if you think logically, um, your abs actually separate when you're pregnant. <laughs> Sounds weird, right? So your ab muscles, and I had me a little, little four pack. I didn't have a six pack, but I had a nice four pack before I started having kids. Uh, so I had strong muscles and I didn't, I really felt this intensely. I won't say it was painful, but it was definitely uncomfortable. Um, and you could actually feel when it first started happening. So I want to say it was in my either in a, like in my second trimester, beginning of my third trimester with my first baby, and you start feeling like burning in your ab area. Um, I didn't know what it was. And so I started Googling like, why do I feel like there is a slow burning fire? And I can't tell, it didn't feel like it was in my stomach and it didn't feel like it was my uterus. So I just didn't know what it was. And so it's called diastasis recti. And it, again, it's literally the separation of your abdomen muscles from each other because you got to make room for the baby growing in your uterus. And so it sucks because 
<laughs> the only people that you see it in are pregnant women. Um, every now and then you have a premature baby that's born with the same thing because their body didn't finish developing before they were born and they didn't have that complete seal upon their birth. But um, again, it's most common in pregnant women. So interestingly, after you have your first baby, you know, you start losing a baby belly, all the water weight, all that starts to go away. Um, you start to actually feel the muscles not sealing back together, but you feel them getting closer back together. And they say if you have like three fingers between the two sides of your muscles, either during birth or after giving birth, then that's diastasis recti. And so I actually have a friend of mine, um, after she delivered, um, she went to a doctor to find out like why this wasn't closing up. She could feel like a little gap. And the doctor explained the same thing to her. And I was like, oh, I remember learning about that when I was pregnant with Kennedy. And so she was told really the only thing to, that can correct it is, is surgery. Abnoplasties can correct it. But naturally, if you're doing like sit-ups or crunches especially when you're pregnant you can make matters worse but even afterwards um, sometimes if you perhaps start working out a little too early after you give birth um, you can even cause yourself to have a hernia because what's happening again is that that muscle didn't get a chance to come back together and you're constantly putting the pressure on it when you're doing your crunches and so you keep pushing like your stomach at that point which is a muscle you're pushing it in and out in and out of that area and that can be problematic and so again um unfortunately you can google it if you don't believe me but yeah it's it's something that <laughs> happens naturally with every pregnant woman your literal abs open up and split in half and they don't naturally always fuse together afterwards so again i was lucky that mine sort of got close back together and, and it was less than the three finger widths apart. Um, and so I was able to continue doing crunches and doing other ab strengthening exercises after I gave birth after the first two. Praying the same thing happens with this one because um, I don't want to have surgery. But again, at least that's an option out there um, so that you, and I I think it's important um, to mention it because again, you, you could hurt yourself actually. Just a word to the wise. Another thing that happens in pregnancy and birth that nobody tells you about and you find out later the hard way. <laughs> as far as the baby's position, so remember last week I was thinking that the baby had gone head down after it was transverse for uh, a little over a day. Well, and I told you I felt some movements up here. So I actually now feel like the baby is head up bottom down in that breech position but curled up because I feel like I have like some hardness up here and then everything around the bottom feels softer and it's been like that for like the last two days so they say that around this time the baby still likes to be in an, like the ultimate fetal position still curled up and even though they have space to stretch out um, they're just more comfortable in that ultra fetal position and so I think that's where the baby is I keep feeling different movements um at the bottom but I think that's just the toes once the baby does stretch but I do feel like the fingers moving around here and then I've been feeling like a little bit of hardness which I think is my baby's big head so <laughs> uh that's my guess for the baby's position so this is my current belly of the week check me out the baby is getting bigger for sure. And thankfully I haven't had to buy new clothes. This is a shirt that I've worn for work for um, like the last two years. So thankfully I haven't had to buy a new wardrobe yet. I've gotten just two maternity dresses so far. And the weather in California is gorgeous. And so I'm probably going to get a couple more dresses just for the spring. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I'm one of the lucky, lucky mamas that don't have to get an entire different wardrobe. But the thing I've been told with some friends who have is that you could at least wear the same clothes that you're following pregnancy. So it's not like you wear them for a couple months and then throw them away. Um, if you're going to have more kids, then you can save them and, uh, hopefully you can fit them the next time around. So next week is week 28 of my pregnancy journey and I am looking forward to my 
ultrasound because I'll be seven months uh, going into my third trimester. And so I have an appointment with my maternal fetal medicine doctor next week. And I can't wait to get you guys updates and show some, hopefully I get some pictures this time. Last time I had my appointment, um, the doctor tried, like he really tried to get some good pictures and the baby was facing him. Like he was over here on my right hand side and the baby's head was here, spine was here, but the, and the baby was facing this way. So he thought he was getting some really good angles and for some reason, we just cannot get any good pictures. So I walked out of there empty handed. I was so disappointed. So hopefully I get some good pictures this time, some good 3D images, 4D maybe, um, because we have that technology available there as well. So we shall see, but I'm excited for this appointment just because I wanna see my baby. I can't wait. And I can't wait to see you next week. So join me then, bye-bye. Thank you.